That's it, Emily. Deep breaths. What's wrong with Mummy? Why is she breathing funny? Your mummy's fine. She's having a baby. She's just breathing like that to help her relax. Flippers on, everyone. That baby's going to be here any minute. Stand back, everyone. No, Kitty, you'll have to stay here. We need someone to look after the ward. Oh. And there's a little octopus needs looking after. Mummy! Oh. Hello, everyone. This is Sarah. Perhaps you'd like to play with Morris and Beverly while you're waiting for your mother. Heads. There's an emergency. A foe with an asthma attack. He can hardly breathe. All work and no play. So you just threw everything around like this? Wow! Oh, Sarah! Be careful! Oh! Nurse Kitty! Nurse Kitty! What is it, Morris? I need a bit pain. Push, Emily! Push! <laughs> That's it. It's a girl. There you are, Emily. Hang on, everyone. I think we've got twins. Oh, twins. I always wanted twins. Push, Emily. Wake up, Kitty. <laughs> It's an emergency. We need a refill for Annie's nebulizer. Oh. Kitty, quick! I need another cot. But Nurse Kitty, Nurse Kitty, what is it? Can I have a glass of water, please? Hang on, I've only got one pair of hands. Push, Emily. <laughs> It's a boy. You've got lovely, healthy twins, Emily. Oh, hang on. There's another oh. one. I always wanted triplets. Better find another cot, Nurse Bunny. You did that on purpose. Sarah, can't you do something useful? Nurse Kitty, will you help, please? We need another cot. Emily's having triplets. Triplets? Oh, Sarah! Oh, Sarah, come back! Nurse Kitty, my head <laughs> Oh, I think that's your phone, Nurse Kitty. Oh! Hurry up, Ted. It's another emergency, Ted. Oh, Arthur, this is one of the most scientific experiments we've ever done. What are you doing? We're just trying to establish... Scientifically? ...whether lemonade is more powerful than ginger beer. Wow! Right. Are we ready? That's funny. That's not very scientific. Oh, no! Oh, dear. There you are, Sarah. I'm bored, Nurse Kitty. Why don't you sit down and play with something? Oh! Sarah? 
Quick, Nurse Kitty, we need a neck brace. Jerry strained his neck. Watching tennis. Nurse Kitty, we've run out of cups. One thing at a time. Can't you see I've got my hands full? <laughs> Dr. Matthews, quick, there's another one. Push! One, two, three, push! It's a boy! Well done, Emily. You're the mother of six lovely babies. <gasps> I always wanted sex tuplets. Oh, hang on. I think there's another one coming. That's funny. Ask Nurse Kitty to get some bottles. These babies need feeding. Need it on, Nurse Kitty. We'll help. Thank you, Ted. I could use an extra pair of hands. Whoops. Sorry, Kitty. We've got to go. It's another emergency. Can I help, Nurse Kitty? No, thank you, Sarah. Oh. Push, Emily. You can do it. <laughs> it's a girl. I always wanted it, Sept. Sept up. Oh, seven babies. We need another cop, Nurse Bunny. And see what Nurse Kitty is doing with those bottles. Just not enough hands. Thanks, Kitty. But we need another one. And another cop. <sighs> I know you're tired, Emily, but you have to push. <laughs> It's a girl. Emily, you've got six, seven, eight healthy babies. I always wondered. Uh, er, eight? Hang on. I think there's another one. Where is everyone? They're all busy. My mummy's having lots of babies. We've got a severely dehydrated bear and needs someone to hold the drip. Um, Sarah? I don't suppose you could grab onto this for me, could you? Of course! Uh, this is Brandon. He's really dehydrated. Sarah, where did you get to? Uh, she's been helping us. I've been trying to help you too, but you were too busy. And now Mummy's got lots of babies, she'll be too busy too. A girl! And that makes nine! Looks as if that's the last one, Emily. Until next time. My bandage is falling off! My brace has slipped. I need a drink. Nine! But I haven't got enough hands! Do you want to see your little brothers and sisters now, Sarah? I hope you've been a good girl, Sarah. She's been a great help, Emily. Well, how do you like your new brothers and sisters? Oh, Mummy, they're lovely. Trouble is, I got nine babies and only eight hands. Don't worry, Mummy. I'll lend you an hand. Going on holiday, Kitty? Yes, a bit of sunshine on the beach. I'm going with Dr. Matthews. Off. He'll be happy. That's as long as there's somewhere he can doggy paddle. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Dr. Atticus. Oh. Ooh. I like your new sun hat. Sun? No, no, no. It's, it's for rocks, Dr. Atticus. Falling rocks. We're going on an archaeological dig, looking for bones. But we're going to look for a bit of sunshine. Oh, no, not sunshine. Bones. Oh, dear. It looks like you won't be going together after all. Chop, chop, everyone. Ermintrude and Ernestina have arrived. Now, here's your bed, Ermintrude and Ernestina. 
But I want a green blanket. I like the red blanket. Well, it's no use arguing. You'll have to share whatever colour blanket you have. I want to face this way. I like the view out of this window. Oh, dear. I like the view out of this window. Well, if all goes well, you'll have a bed of your own after the operation. Imagine, you'll be separated for the first time since you were born. What could be a better present for your birthday? <gasps> Is the anaesthetic ready, Dr. Atticus? Almost ready, Sally. Good. This will be a very long operation. We'll have to keep them asleep for a long time. Are all the instruments sterilized, Nurse Bunny? Almost done. I'll need twice as many instruments as usual. After all, I will be operating on two patients at once. Have we all the patient's medical details, Dr. Matthews? This is a very complicated operation. I don't want to make any mistakes. Yes, Sally. This is Ernestina's X-ray. No, Dr. Matthews, I think that's Ermintrude's X-ray. No, Sally. It's Ernestina's. If there's one thing I know about, it's bones. We're a team, Ted. Don't know what I'll do without you. No. We wouldn't be able to finish this in time for the twins' birthday if we didn't do it together. We understand each other, see? On the same wavelength. We know that two Teds are better than one. Yes. Without your help, I'd never get this jumper finished in time. Yes, without your help. Jumper? I'm making a pair of socks. Oh, no. was a record. A 2,000-piece jigsaw in 32 minutes. I want to play snakes and ladders now. I want to play cards. You won't have time for that. I'm taking you to the theatre for your operation. I want my own wheelchair. Yes, and I want my own wheelchair. Now, don't be silly. You know you have to share the same wheelchair. Tomorrow, you can have your own. I can't possibly operate until we've sorted out these x-rays. They are sorted. This is Ermintrude's x-ray. No, that's Ernestina's x-ray. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Uh, excuse me. Uh, would it be presumptuous if I had a little peek at them myself? <sighs> you insist? Hmm. Very interesting. Have you noticed that these x-rays are exactly the same? Just as you'd expect of identical twins. Of course they're the same, so... Well, then, because they're exactly the same, it doesn't matter which one's which, does it? Don't you say, Matthews? Right, let's get started. I hope you're not putting sugar in Ernestina's cake. Of course. You can't make icing without sugar. Anyway, it's been scientifically proven that sugar gives you energy. I hope you're putting sugar in Ermintrude's cake. No, I'm not. It's been scientifically proven that sugar rots your teeth. Oh, dear. What is it? I've made the icing, but forgotten the cake. I've made a cake, but I've forgotten the icing. I know. If you use my icing... And you use my cake... We can make a birthday cake that'll give you plenty of energy. But won't do too much damage to your teeth. But who's it for? Ernestina or Ermintrude? They'll just have to share. Administer anaesthetic. Am I having the same as her? I want a different anaesthetic. Yes, I want a different one too. I don't want to share with her. No, I don't want to share with her. I really can't understand why they need to argue. I couldn't agree with you more, Dr. Atticus. <laughs> Good morning, Ernestina. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's Ermintrude's birthday, too. But where is Ermintrude? You've had your operation, Ernestina. Remember? You've been separated. Separated? Oh, yes. She's in another ward called an intensive care ward. Then why aren't I in that ward, too? Because you've woken up. Hasn't Ermintrude woken up, then? Not yet, Ernestina. She has to wake up today, or she'll miss her birthday. Where's 
Where's Ernestina? She's in the other ward. But it's our birthday. I don't want my birthday if Ernestina can't have it with me. We always have our birthday together. Always, always. Of course. Now you've woken up, we can go and see her. Ermintrude! And Estina! Will you do this jigsaw with me, Ermintrude? It's taking ages to do it on my own. All right. As long as we can play snakes and ladders afterwards. But I want to play cards. There won't be time for that. It's your birthday, remember? Is that cake for me? Is that cake for me? It's for both of you. You can share it. Just because you've been separated doesn't mean you can't still share things. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. And since we've worked very hard to look after you, perhaps you'd like to share it with us, too. Yes! We, we both, both agree, agree to, to that. that. On your way home, Kitty? Yes. I've got to quickly go and book a holiday on my own. This is where I've decided to go, Turtle Bay. Sun, sand and creamy ice cream. You off too, Matthew? That's right, Dr. Atticus. I've got to quickly go and book my holiday. This is where I've decided to go, Turtle Bay. Just the place for bones. Oh, so, Kitty and Matthews, you've decided to go on holiday together after all. What? what? Together? together? Why, yes. You're both going to the same place. Oh. Hmm. You better hurry before the travel agent closes. Yes. Come on, Kitty. Coming, Dr. Matthews. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dr. Atticus, what are you doing here? Oh, I think this speech is big enough for us all to share, Dr. Matthews. I found a very interesting bone this morning. Can we have an ice cream, Dr. Matthews? I just feel like sitting in the sun with an ice cream. This bone. One stocking for me, and one for you, Dr. Matthews. We dogs don't usually wear stockings, Kitty. <laughs> They're not for wearing, Dr. Matthews. They're for when Santa comes tonight. He'll put our presents in them. Yours in one, mine in the other. Well, as long as it's big enough for a bone. It's going to be a lovely Christmas. <sighs> Look, I think it might snow. Wouldn't it be great to have a white Christmas? I'm doing your Christmas shopping in an helicopter. Yeah, I don't know why everyone else doesn't do it. Hey, wait a minute. Look down there. Looks like a bear. A white bear. White bear? Bears aren't white. Bears is brown. Not if they're from the North Pole or not. North Pole? What's she doing here then? What are you doing here? You should be on the North Pole. I floated away when the ice broke, and then I lost my wellies in the water, and now I can't move my toes. Can't move your toes? Why? What's the matter with them?
like it. We better get you to hospital as soon as possible. What's this? An early Christmas present? Yes, it's from us. To us. It's a new computer, so we can use the internet. The internet tells you everything a scientist needs to know. We need it urgently. There's an emergency. Emergency? Yes, we've got to find a recipe for Christmas cake. Ah, there you are, Dr. Matthews. There's an emergency. I've got a very cold bear to warm up. Action stations. Mallet. Mallet. Chisel. Chisel. Uh, anesthetic, Sandy. No need, Dr. Atkins. Peter's toes are so frozen he can't feel anything. There. Now. Let's have a look at those toes. Mm. Just as I thought. Severe frostbite. Kitty, get these feet into warm water. Dr. Atkins, we need some warm socks. Uh, oh, I'll see what I can do. Dr. Matthews, fetch the child a warm drink. Yes, Sally? Will I be well enough to go home for Christmas? I'm afraid not, Peter. I've got a very nasty case of frostbite. But I want to be with my mummy. And what about my presents? Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. just the job. Perfect recipe for cocoa, and it's all on the internet. Is that drink ready for Peter? Yes, look, it's called cocoa. We've found the recipe on the computer. Yes, the computer tells us everything. I wish it could tell us how to cheer up Peter. He's going to spend Christmas in the hospital without his family and without his presents. Oh. Well done, Dr. Atticus. They'll keep Peter's toes warm as toast. Where on earth did you find them? Oh, they were just hanging around. Well, they're just the job. Feeling better, Peter? Yes, but I want to go home. Ooh. Everyone should spend Christmas with their families. Or with the one they love. Oh, yes. Yes, I always spend Christmas with my brother. And I spend Christmas with my brother, too. Well, if Peter has to stay in hospital, then why don't we bring his mother here? I could fetch her in the helicopter. And I could fetch her in my helicopter. We just need to know where she lives. Now, where did those stockings go? On an ice floor? On a thin piece of ice floating in the sea? That's no use. We won't be able to land our helicopter. I'm going to ask Claire and Arthur. Their computer can tell them everything. Currents and reasons. Claire, Arthur, stop that. But we're making Christmas cake. This is more important. We need to bring Peter's mother here for Christmas. And the Tets say they can't land the helicopter. Don't worry, we'll find the answer. On the computer. I've come to change the warm patches on your toes, Peter. Mm, they're still a little bit frozen. My stockings. What do you mean, your stockings? These stockings are for Santa to put our presents in. We must think of the patient first, Kitty. Yes, you're right, Sally. We must think of the patients first. Even if it means we don't get Christmas presents this year. By using low frequency induction measurements coupled with a precise laser altimeter, we should be able to tell where it's safe to land. Let's find the tape. There. Let's tuck you in. You must have an early night because tomorrow is Christmas. It won't be Christmas for me if I'm not at home. Now, now, Peter. Let the hospital be your home. But it's not my home. Home is my mum, my presence and the snow. Home is a long, long way away. It shouldn't be far now. Whoa! There it is. But is it safe to land? It's not going to feel like Christmas with no stockings full of presents. <coughs> uh, well, at least we can have a piece of Christmas cake. Bad news. Two lots of bad news. The Teds haven't been able to land. Our invention didn't work. Oh, Peter will be so disappointed. What's the other bit of bad news? 
The other bit of bad news is that we wasted so much time on that stupid computer that we'd no time left to make the Christmas cake this year. What? Well, we thought the patient must come first. Uh, 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 oh, yes, you're right, Claire. The patient must come first. Oh. <sighs> Everyone, and happy oh, Christmas. Oh, yes. Uh, um. Oh, Kitty, this is the best Christmas ever. My mummy came all the way from the North Pole and brought all my presents with her. But I thought you couldn't land. Claire and Arthur said their invention didn't work. No, it didn't. Useless. We chucked it in the sea. Had to lift them up on a rope. So now hospital is just like home. I have my mummy and my presents and the snow. So it's a white Christmas after all. Special late post for the livery last night. It's addressed to all the staff. Well, let's open it. After all, it is Christmas. And it did come after all. Happy returns, Dr. Atticus. It's my birthday. Good heavens, I completely forgot. We weren't quite sure how many candles we should put on the um, cake. Yes, um... Uh... <clears throat> Sorry to spoil the party, what? but Virtue's oh, just been rushed into emergency. Oh. Sally, Kitty, could you come right come away? Come now, Dr. Matthews. <gasps> oh, yes. No sign of a head injury. Mm. Oh. Blood pressure's low. Doesn't look good. Yes, the poor thing. Mm. <gasps> oh, my poor virtue. Take the sample to the lab, please, Kitty. <laughs> oh. Would you like a piece of my birthday cake? No, oh, thanks. Just had breakfast. You must be getting on a bit now, Dr. Atticus. Uh, yes, I, I think I'm rather more than one year old. Would you mind if we asked you a few questions about how Virtue got into this condition, Mrs... Uh, Mrs... It's... Uh, oh, no, I should know that one. <laughs> I'm sure I've got it here somewhere. Mm. Uh, oh, yes. Here we are, Mrs. Olive Atkins. Do you have any idea why virtue collapsed? Um, oh, now that's a hard one. I should know this, but... Uh, Has he eaten anything unusual or taken any medicine? Oh, that's a puzzle, that is. You see, if you could remember, it would help us to find out what's wrong with virtue. And then we could help him get better. Oh. I'm sorry, I can't remember anything. <laughs> How is he? He's really not very well. 
If only we knew how this happened, but Olive can't remember anything. It's hard to remember things when you're very worried. I'll see if I can get her to relax. That might help her remember. Good idea. I'll bring her a cup of tea. Relaxing with Benny B? Um, piano meditations by Richard Cuttlefish. No. Uh, aha! Perfect. Dreamy sounds of dolphins. Right, Olive. I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your trunk. Sorry, what did you say? Oh dear, we've run out of tea bags. Have you got the key to the cupboard, Sally? No, I think Dr. Atticus had it last. Oh dear, better get a new one cut then. In. Key to the store cupboard, Dr. Atticus. Mm. Don't know what that's doing there. The key, Dr. Atticus? Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, sorry. No, I haven't got it. I could have sworn you had it last. Not me, Kitty. <sighs> oh, but I was going to make Olive a nice cup of tea. Well, don't worry. I'll take her some cake instead. game called Bez. Now, uh, pick two cards. Oh. Oh. Now, memorize where the cards are. Do they? Oh, let's try something else. Any news? He's very ill. Sally thinks we might have to operate. Oh dear, I hope not. I don't think Dr. Atticus will be able to manage. Why ever not? I think he's losing his memory. He forgot about his own birthday, can't remember how old he is, and has lost the key to the store cupboard. I'll ask Claire and Arthur. They might have something to help him remember things. Oh, Dr. Matthews, you're so decisive. I like that in a dog. There is no medical drug for memory loss, but we do have a book somewhere about memory techniques. You had that book last, didn't you, Claire? No, you had it last. Did I? Well, where is it then? Are you sure you didn't have it? Peanut butter on cake, Dr. Atticus. Yes. Olive must be really hungry by now. Oh, no. His heartbeats are very irregular. Get Dr. Atticus. We're going to have to operate right now. You are now asleep. Tell me, Olive, what was Virtue doing this morning? I gave him something to eat. He was hungry. Oh, oh where am I? Oh, Dr. Atticus, we just reached complete inner peace. I'm sorry. We ran out of tea, so I thought you might like some peanut butter cake. That's it. What is it? Nuts. Don't be so rude. No, nuts. He's allergic to nuts, and I gave him peanut butter sandwiches this morning. Are you sure now? Yes, certain. Oh, my poor virtue. I'll never forgive myself. I'll tell everyone. <laughs> an allergic reaction. We'd better tell Sally. Yes? Thank you, Claire. EpiPen kit. <laughs> right. Good. EpiPen kit. Do you think that'll work? Should do. Makes the heart beat really fast. It could wake a hibernating bear. Mm. Oh. 
I'll go and get Olive. She'll be so relieved. Oh, I just felt Virtue's trunk move. Virtue! Virtue! He's waking up. Oh, Virtue, I'm so glad you're all right. <laughs> ah, Grandma, you're squeezing my trunk. Oh, sorry, love. I must say, you're looking a lot better. This is a medic alert bracelet to say you are allergic to nuts. You must never take it off, OK? Yes. And you must always remind people never to give you anything with nuts in, especially your grandma. OK. Here's a notebook. I've written in the notebook what virtue can and can't eat, so you don't forget. Oh, thanks. You know, Dr. Atticus, maybe you should use a notebook, too. You did forget your birthday. Kitty, when you're as old as I am, you try to forget your birthday. Oh, I am sorry, Dr. Atticus. Oh, that's quite all right. Actually, a notebook might come in handy. I have one in my pocket. Here you are. Off. Oh, dear. The key to the store cupboard. I had it all the time. On second thoughts, Kitty, Maybe you should keep that notebook. I think you need it more than me. <laughs> Mrs. Piggott? Ah, oh, Dr. Matthews, I'm very concerned about Seamus's skin. It's gone completely flaky. I've never had this problem with any of my other children. Well, let's take a look at him. Uh, where is he? I'm sorry, he's so sensitive. He thinks people will make fun of him because of his flaky skin. Come on, Seamus, let the doctor look at you. Ah! Seamus, you're a snake. <laughs> It's only for a night or two, so we can take a proper look at you. You will make me better. Otherwise, no one will like me with my skin falling to bits. Now, don't be silly, Seamus. Sometimes we look better than at other times, but always remember, we look just the same underneath. He was adopted. I thought you might have realized that, Dr. Matthews. After all, he's a snake and his mother is a horse. <sighs> We're still going out to the cinema tomorrow night, the 25th. You haven't forgotten. Of course I haven't forgotten. I've been looking forward to it all week. I know I won't sleep a wink tonight. Oh. Everyone makes fun of me because of my flaky skin! Everyone makes fun of me, too. Why? 
I'm a Dalmatian, and I haven't got any spots. But you know what Nurse Kitty says? We're all just the same underneath. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Ted. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Ted. Oi, Kitty. Yes, Ted. Uh, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but did you know you've got a great big spot right in the middle of your face? I get it seen to. Sticks out a mile. Thank you, Ted. Yes, I did know. But I'm just the same underneath. Oh, Kitty, you're a bit late. Had a spot of bother? Just a spot, Dr Matthews. I've been wondering about Seamus. And I think he may have psoriasis. What he needs is some coal tar ointment. I'll go and get some from Claire and Arthur. I need to see them about another problem anyway. My goodness, Kitty. Aren't you hot wearing a scarf on a hot day like today? Oh, no. I'm, I'm going out tonight. I don't want to catch cold. That should do it. Hello, Claire. Arthur. I've just come to collect some coal tar ointment. Righto. Oh, and I was just wondering if you had any spot cream. Spot cream? You're in luck, Kitty. We've just invented some. Help yourself. to get rid of my spot and now I've got two. Exactly. That's why it's called Spot Cream. It's for Dodi. He's a Dalmatian and he hasn't got any spots. Yes, and it's very kind of you to try it out for us, Kitty. Oh! Did you see that, Ted? She's got another spot now. What a whopper! Can <laughs> see it for miles. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That should do the trick. I hope so. I don't want anyone to make fun of me. See, Seamus? Remember what Nurse Kitty told you? You're just the same underneath. Isn't that right, Kitty? Um, yes, Dr Matthews. But everyone will run away from me so they don't catch it too. Catch it? Don't be silly, Seamus. You can't catch it. Why is Nurse Kitty wearing a mask then? That's true. Why are you wearing a mask, Kitty? Oh. Hello, Dodie. Time to try our new spot cream. Just rub it in and it'll give you spots. It's been scientifically tested. There we are. I can see a spot coming now. Let me have a look. Let me look. There. Oh. What's the matter? It's the wrong colour. Dalmatians always have black spots. People will laugh at me if I don't have black spots. Oh. I'm worried about Seamus, Dr Atticus. His skin is flaking off. Well, of course, you do know that snakes shed... My goodness, Kitty. Those spots are enormous. Really quite unusually huge. Yes, Dr Atticus, but I'm just the same underneath. Ah, oh, Kitty, I've just been looking at Seamus's skin. I'm just wondering if we should try the spa pool. Yes, Dr Matthews, I'll be there now. Oh. What's got into her? Uh, Dr. Matthews, you do know that snakes... Huh? Talk to yourself. There we go. That should make your skin feel softer. I hope so. My skin's getting worse and worse. I must be the ugliest animal in the world. Nonsense. A little bit of rough skin is nothing to worry about. Could be a lot worse. Look at Kitty with those two great big spots on her face. Oh. Any improvement, Kitty? No, Dr Matthews. No improvement at all. I can't help feeling that Kitty's taking Seamus's problem a bit personally. Well, Matthews, what is it? I wanted your opinion about Seamus. His skin just gets flakier and flakier. Ah, yes. Well, that's because he's a snake, and snakes shed their... Ah, oh, there you are, Kitty. And where's Seamus? I wanted Dr Atticus to take a look at him. I can't find Seamus anywhere, Dr Matthews. But I did find this. Yes. 
As I've been trying to tell you, Dr. Matthew. Come on, Kitty. Let's get to the bottom of this. There you are, Seamus. Look at me! Look at me! Oh, I'm so grateful, Dr. Matthews. Seamus' skin looks better than it ever did. What did you do? We didn't do anything. No. As they grow, snakes shed their skin. It's a natural process. You were right, Kitty. All the time I really was just the same underneath. So you don't have to worry either, Dr. Atticus. Me? Well, even with that spot, you're just the same underneath. Spot? What spot? Must be all those chocolate biscuits. Oh, dear. Are you going? What about your spots? Oh, I've decided to stay as I am. It doesn't really matter what you look like. Oh, uh, I know. We're, We're just, just the same, same underneath. Goodbye, Ted. Ready to go, Kitty. The film starts in half an hour. I... I don't think I'll be able to go after all, Dr Matthews. Oh, Kitty, I really want to see this film. It's got Leoline Leopard in it. Those spots of hers drive me wild. Really, Dr Matthews? Can't resist spots. Ever since I went out with a Dalmatian once, my kitty, your skin looks wonderful in the moonlight. Does it, Dr. Matthews? Really? Heavenly. Now, come on, kitty, or we'll be late. Coming, Dr. Matthews, coming. Dr. Matthews, I've replaced the camshaft belt, changed the mm. brake fluid and adjusted the tappets. You'll find she runs like a dream. Thank you. What was he talking about? My car, Kitty. It's had a complete overhaul. Fancy a spin? But, Dr. Oh, Matthews, haven't we got work to... Won't take long. We'll be back in no time. Come on. All right. Fasten your seatbelt. Gosh! This is the life. The top down, the world flushing past, your ears blowing in the breeze. Don't you think you're going a bit too fast? No. Fast? You should see what she'll do if I really put my foot down. Watch out! I think that was Dr Matthews and Kitty. No time to stop now, Ted. We've got to get these weasels to hospital. Are you all right, Dr. Matthews? Yes. Just a bit sad about the car. I've only just had it repaired. Good job we were wearing our seat belts. I've never seen such appalling driving in my life. Dr. Matthews should know better. Forced me right off the road. Ugh, could have put me in intensive care. Perhaps you should think about wearing a helmet? Good idea. We could make one for you. Car accident. Should have been wearing seat belts. It's an emergency. Get a move on. And who's our little doctor? What's your name? What? Uh, don't worry.
worry, Walter. We'll look after your sister and mummy. How long has she been unconscious? Since the accident. Wasn't wearing any seatbelt. Went straight through the windscreen. Banged her head and got cuts mm. all over her face. I'm afraid your arm is broken, Mrs. Weasel. Be careful with it, and in a few weeks it'll be right as rain. Well, what about my wonder? Here is she. Can I see her? Surgeon Sally is having a look at her now. You'll be able to see her very soon. And we've called Mr. Weasel. He's on his way. Now, why don't I fetch you something to eat? What would you say to a turnip and peanut butter sandwich? Hmm. Here are the x-rays, Surgeon Sally. Hmm. Uh, she hasn't broken anything, but she's still unconscious. I'm worried about this pressure building up in her head. Will you have to operate? Yes, I think so. But I'm going to need backup. Where are Dr. Matthews and Nurse Kitty? The bodywork's wrecked. The suspension's gone. I won't be able to drive my car for weeks. Look on the bright side, Dr. Matthews. At least we're not hurt. Hmm. Good job we were wearing our seatbelts. <laughs> This should be strong enough. Steel reinforced. There we are. A perfect helmet for Sally to wear on her scooter. Don't you think we ought to test it first? Look, Dr. Matthews, there's a car. We could stop it and ask for a lift. Good idea, Kitty. They must be wondering where we are by now. Hello? Oh! oh sh what do you mean by waving at me like that? Almost caused an accident. As it is, I bumped my nose. Well, that's your own fault. I'm sorry, but we've had an accident ourselves, and we urgently need to get to the hospital. All right, get in. I'm going to the hospital myself. My daughter's been in a car crash. Poor little weasel. What can I do, Bob? I want to be able to wake up. There's nothing we can do, Walter. Wonder needs an operation. Can I do an operation? I've got a stethoscope. No, only a doctor can do that. But what could I do? I want to help. Why don't you fetch me a cup of water? There's a machine in the corridor. Cannonball in the circus, I laugh at danger. You wouldn't have bumped your nose if you were wearing a seatbelt. Young weasel, female, severe trauma to the head. Pressure building under the skull. We need to reduce that pressure immediately, right? You know what to do. Apply anaesthetic. Flying anaesthetic. Scalpel, Dr. Matthews. Scalpel. Where's Walter? He should be here with us. I'll go and look for him, Mrs. Weasel. That should do it. Now let's see if the straps fit. Matthews. At last. Well, is she going to be all right? We've done everything we can, Mrs. Weasel. The next few hours are crucial. Mum, Dad, what happened? Oh, one 
sir. You're all right. What happened to your arm? We had an accident in the car. You bumped your head. Where's Walter? Is he all right? He's fine. Claire and Arthur have been looking after him. Walter! Walter, look what we've had for you! That's nice. Thank you, Walter. But what is it? It's a safety seat. For the car you strap yourself in? Yes, we've made two. One for you and one for Walter. Then if you have an accident, you don't get hurt. And you don't have to come to the hospital. Here you are, Dr. Matthews. I've done the welding and the bodywork repairs and replaced the big end. Uh, she goes all right, you just won't be able to get the same power as before. Thank you. What was he talking about? He's saying it won't ever go as fast as it used to. That's fine by me. Maybe we could go for a long, slow drive. Tell me, Kitty, is it my imagination? Or is Sally wearing a safety seat on her head? new patient. Hedgehogs really ought to look both ways before they cross the road. Osh. Oh, uh, don't be too hard on her. Your mother's just died in a road accident. She seems to be taking it very well. Oh, no! Look at me! Look at me! Tiffany, what on earth are you doing? Surgeon Sally, look what I can do! Get down right this minute. I'm not having you leaving here more damaged than when you came in. I'm perfectly safe. Whoa! 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 Told you! You really ought to rest after all you've been through. I can see right up your nose. Dr. Matthews. What? Oh, hello, Kitty. Have have you been sitting in here in the dark since first thing in the morning? I, well, I, I suppose I must have been. Dr. Matthews, I, I've noticed you've been a little down lately. Lovesick, perhaps? What? Oh, no. I, it's just... I've got fleas. What? In my house. And it's going to take weeks to get rid of them. And... My car's on its last legs, and my television's on the blink. Everything just seems to be going wrong. Are you sure I can't help at all? Well, Kitty. Yes? There's always... Yes? A fresh mug of hot tea might be nice. Oh. Hey, Tiffany, nah. what are you listening to? I don't recognise that tune. It's not plugged in. I'm not listening to anything. Sucker! Is your mum going to bring you some music when she visits you? I haven't got a mum anymore. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I know! Let's play trampolines! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Oh, watch out. Oi! What do you think you're doing? Well, we've noticed you've been feeling a little down recently. How suffocating me supposed to help? This is our latest invention, a hypnosis helmet. 
You just pop it on and the sights and sounds of the world disappear. Except for the voice of the person who's hypnotising you into feeling better. Observe. Martha? Martha? Uh, um, uh, perhaps we need to do a little more work on the volume control. Ah, Dr Matthews, I hear you've been feeling a little down. Uh, well, I... I always find that a donut helps. Fancy one, Dr Matthews? No, thanks, Dr Atticus. I seem to have gone off my food lately. Got, got, got off your food? Dr Matthews, you couldn't go and check on young Tiffany for me? Of course, yes. Tiffany, poor little thing. If she doesn't get Dr Matthews to snap out of it, nothing will. Got ya! <laughs> Oliver! Yuri! Theodore! Oh, no. Wrong bed. Uh, wrong bed? Hiya, Dr Matthews! Hiya, Tiffany. How's that snout of yours? It's fine. How's yours? Oh, mustn't grumble. Come here. Let's have a look at it. Listen, I can make a noise I couldn't make before. <laughs> Very clever, Tiffany. But with a bit of luck, you'll soon be back making normal hedgehog noises. Now, tell me if it hurts when I do this. Yes. And this? Yes. And this? No. Eh? Only kidding! <laughs> you should have seen your face! <laughs> Afternoon, ladies. Hello, Dr. Matthews. You seem to have cheered up a little. Oh, I've just had a nice long chat with Tiffany Hedgehog. Poor little thing. Having to have all those painful operations. On top of losing her mother. That's what I mean. She's a lesson to us all. So bright, so cheerful. But don't you think she's, well, a bit too cheerful? Quick, all hands to the pumps. What, what, what on earth's the matter, Atticus? It's young Tiffany Hedgehog. We can't find her anywhere. Tiffany? But I was only talking to her a few minutes ago. According to Oliver and Theodore, she said she was going for a walk. And now she's disappeared. Tiffany? 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 Get out of my way. This is important. Get out of my way. This is important. Tiffany? 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 Oh, this is hopeless. I'm worried I might have said something to upset her when we were chatting. Oh, you could never upset anybody, Dr. Matthews. I've never known anyone who was, well, so good at, at making people feel good about themselves. Just a minute. Can you hear something? Well, it might be my heart beating. It sounds like snoring. Tiffany! Where am I? Oh, Tiffany, we've been looking for you everywhere. Tiffany, I, I'm sorry if I said something to upset you earlier. No, I, I just wanted to go somewhere quiet to have a cry. I must have fallen asleep. Am I in trouble? What? No, of course not, dear. We were just worried about you. It, it's very tiring being cheerful all the time. You don't have to be cheerful all the time, Tiffany. But when I'm not, people feel sorry for me and, and it reminds me how much I miss my mummy. Tiffany, it's all right to feel low. But it's important to talk about it to someone. Otherwise, things just get worse and worse. Mmm. This is a job for Felicity. This is Felicity, Tiffany. She can help you. I don't need any help. I'm a very good listener, Tiffany. Sometimes it helps to talk when you have problems. I used to talk to my mummy about my problems, but she isn't here anymore. Now you can talk to me. I know it's hard to talk about things, but sometimes it really helps. I really miss my mummy. Who's going to tuck me into bed at night? I'll have no one to hold my hand when I go to nursery, or kiss it better when I hurt myself. Mm, and I've always said that the secret of happiness is a full stomach and a warm blanket. Kitty, how did it go? How's Tiffany? They've only just started, Dr. Matthews. Oh, I just feel bad for... not realising she was laughing on the outside and crying on the inside. She'll be fine now. Felicity's very good at... 
whatever it is she does. Have you ever thought of seeing a counselor, Dr. Matthews? For when you're feeling blue? I... well, I've thought about it, but... Well, I mean, when I feel down, I can always talk to my friends, like Atticus and Sally and... Well, you, Kitty. Really, Dr. Matthews? Would you really trust me with your problems? Well, I, I mean, I, I, you know I think a lot of you, Kitty. And I... well... Ah, oh, there you are, Dr. Matthews. I need your opinion on a very nasty case of wind. Yes, Sally. Right away. Oh, Dr. Matthews. Why are we fixing the pipes? We're not heating engineers. No, we're ambulance men. It's not our job to fix the central heating. Well done, Ted. Good to get the yeah? What did she say? Didn't hear a word. You see, I don't just think of you as a surgeon. I think of you as a very warm and lovely hip hop. Uh, what was that, Dr. Matthews? Can't hear a thing. I just thought it'd be a great idea if, if one night we went out to the cinema. I'm sorry, Dr. Matthews, I didn't catch any of that. <laughs> That's better. Now, what were you saying, Dr. Matthews? I'm all ears. Well, I... Surgeon Sally, Dr. Matthews, new patient for you. Eustacia, a little mouse. I'm on my way. <clears throat> oh. Dr. Matthews? The new patient? You know, sometimes, Kitty, she doesn't listen to a word I say. Aren't you going to examine her? Examine her? Kitty, I can't even get her to go out to the cinema. What is that racket? Can't anyone get any sleep? Now, Eustacia, do you have any pain? No, I live at 3 Green Hill Lane. Eh? Now, Eustacia, when did all this start? With my granny. Oh, Matthews, I'm not getting anywhere with you, Stacia, here. Won't answer any of my questions. No? Well, let's have a look, then. This won't hurt you, Stacia. She looks after me. Hmm. It looks like you've had an infection which has given you glue ears. Jam sandwiches. We'd better keep you in tonight, Eustacia, and keep an eye on you. I'll be six next birthday. Hmm. Not joking? Yes. We've done enough for today. No, I'm not leaving this one. Got to leave the pump going, Dr. Atticus. Or it might flood. See? But how's anyone going to get any sleep? There. Now you have a good night's sleep, Eustacia. Good night. Under my pillow. Hmm. It's all right for some. How are we meant to sleep with all this noise? It's like living in a drain pipe. Now 
down a bit. Now left. Eustacia has sticky fluid here, between the eardrum and the inner ear. You know, Sally, if you don't like the cinema, perhaps we could go to the opera. Opera it? Yes, I think you're right, Dr. Matthews. And as soon as possible. That's it. Not again. I've slept a week. No! We won't get any sleep. Not with this racket. Good morning. Can I help, Ted? Help? If you want to help, you can pass me an hammer. Right, Ted. Turn off the pump. What do you mean? I already turned it off. Can't you turn that radio off? It's driving us batty. Eustacia, you must turn it down a little. Thanks. You look nice too, Nurse Kitty. Don't do that. I can't hear it if you turn it down. I know, Eustacia. You have a problem with your ears. We need to operate. Operate? But I don't want an operation. I'm not going to have one. Don't worry, Eustacia. It won't hurt. And afterwards, you'll be able to hear perfectly. No, I don't need a bedpan. <laughs> Man. And we thought that what with you being so scientific... I might find a way to stop the radiators rattling. No problem. Dr Matthews, Dr Matthews, <clears throat> Eustacia won't have her operation. She absolutely refuses. <clears throat> yes, she does. Sally refuses everything I suggest. I was talking about Eustacia. Honestly, Kitty, sometimes I think you don't listen to a word I say. Oh. Well, here we are, Ted's. We've invented something that will solve the problem. Yes, can't fail. It's scientific. Hey. We've invented these. We call them earplugs. You put them in your ears, like so, and you can't hear the radiator. Well, that's no good. That's not going to fix the radiator, is it? Anything the matter? Nobody appreciates science. No, our brilliant ideas are all wasted. I know what you mean. We need to put a grommet in Eustacia's ear, but she won't have the operation. Grommet? Yes, it's a little plastic tube. It drains off any sticky fluid in the ears. That's it! <laughs> Thanks, Kitty. <laughs> I don't know. Vayek. We've got a new invention. This one will definitely work. It's completely scientific. What is it? It's a grommet. There's too much water running through the pipes, so we put this in to take away the extra water. What is it? A grommet. A bit like the one they want to put in your ear, only bigger. That's it. That's done the trick, Ted. Ah, that's better. Peace at last. Wow, I want to grum it too. I want to grum it. And you shall have one. Let's go and tell Kitty. No, I usually wear wellies. Right, everybody, let's get down to business. Where's Dr. Atticus? Uh, coming. Do you think Sally would like to go to a football match? Come on, Dr. Matthews, we need to get on with it. No, kickoff isn't until 3 p.m. 
I'm talking about Eustacia's operation. You don't listen to a word I say. Right. Scissors. Scissors, Sally. I said scissors. Anesthetic ready. Anesthetic! Why isn't the anesthetic ready? Oh, I'm about to perform a delicate piece of surgery. Why isn't anyone listening? How do you feel now, Eustacia? Oh, much better, thank you, Dr. Matthews. I just wish it wasn't so noisy in the ward. Oh, well, excuse me. <coughs> Feeling a bit peckish. Well, that's that sorted out then. Anything else? There is one other matter, Sally. If I could just have a private word. Well, Matthews, what is it? I was just wondering, Sally, if you'd like to come with me to a football match this afternoon. Eh? What was that, Matthews? He says, do you want to go to a football match this afternoon? Mmm, get your ears syringed. What? What was that, Matthews? He says you should get your ears syringed. <laughs> Hello, Haley. You've been very brave. Daddy? It's all right, dear. You're at the hospital. You did a spectacular high jump at the Gymkhana. Remember? Mm. And it would have been even more spectacular if you hadn't landed on your head. But Dr. Matthews has done a wonderful job of fixing you up. Oh, it's all part of the service. I'll just go and see Claire and Arthur about getting your scan done. I must say, nurse, I'm not sure I like the sound of this scan business. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Morris. It's just a precaution. Better safe than sorry. Hey, Haley. Ah, oh, Dr. Matthews, how's Haley doing? That was a very nasty tumble she took. Oh, she'll be fine. We bandaged her up and I'm just off to see about a scan. We'd best keep her in for a couple of days, just to be on the safe side. Yes, that's up. Dr. Matthews, what are you doing with that stethoscope? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm glad you noticed. It arrived this morning. It's the Stethomatic 6000, the latest model. It's brilliant. Light, flexible, virtually indestructible. Mm, as long as it does the job, Dr. Matthews, that's all that matters. your picture taken. Only more boring. There, Haley. Now that didn't hurt, did it? Hmm. All finished? Haley's been very brave. Haven't you got a smile for your dad? Hmm. She's probably smiling on the inside. Come on, love. Let's get you back to the wall. I think I've seen Haley smile once all the time she's been here. Well, maybe she's worried about her test results. I'm sure you can think of a way to take her mind off things. Well, speaking as a scientist, I recommend ice cream. And speaking as another scientist, I agree. Oh, my new aprons are right. 
Dr. Matthews, do you notice anything different about me? What? Um, new hairdo? No. Um, y you've taken your glasses off. I haven't worn glasses for years. Really? Oh, uh, I don't know, Kitty. Look, can we do this later? I've got to get to the lab. Oh, Dr. Matthews. You won't get very far on that thing, Arthur. The wheels are stuck to the ground. This isn't a bike, Dr. Matthews. It's a dynamo. Excellent. Hmm, very impressive. But shouldn't you be concentrating on getting the results of Haley's scan? Thank you. Good news, Haley. I've examined the results of your scan and everything's fine. Oh, wonderful. Is it that wonderful, Haley? Yes. Thank you. Does that mean she can come home? Well, not quite yet, I'm afraid. We'll need to keep her in for observation. But that shouldn't be for more than a day or two. Afternoon, children. I don't suppose anybody would like an ice cream at all. Please, please, can I have one? <laughs> no need to panic. There's enough for everyone. Come on, Haley. So, Haley's scan was clear. Yes, Nurse Kitty. Nothing to worry about. She still looks unhappy, though, doesn't she? In fact, I still haven't seen her smile once. Hmm. Interesting. And Nurse Kitty realised that Haley hasn't smiled once the whole time she's been here. It is so good when it comes to noticing that kind of thing. Well, yes, but... Well, you're clever in all sorts of other ways. I mean, you're so... You're so... Hello! Oh, I see a beautiful aura surrounding you this morning. Ah, Felicity, we appear to have a problem. A child that won't smile. Any suggestions? Hmm. Well, come to mention it, there's one technique that never fails. I call it TED Therapy. Good evening, boys and girls. And for your entertainment tonight, we present the fabulous TED Brothers. <laughs> 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 and now, for something completely different. See? I told you we should have practiced. Sally, do you notice anything about Haley? <laughs> Haley? What terrible tooth decay. Oh, poor love. <laughs> poor Haley. Sally shouldn't have made her cry like that. Well, the important thing is that we know that Haley wasn't unhappy. She was just self-conscious about her tooth decay. Sally would never upset anyone on purpose. It's just her way. She's so different from you, Dr. Matthews. I mean, you're so sensitive and... and understanding and... and thoughtful and... Yeah, me. And... <laughs> what a hectic day. And I had to get up early every morning to go training and I just kept forgetting to brush my teeth and they started to get worse and worse and worse and I was so worried about it that I wasn't concentrating on my jumping and... 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 Now, Haley, remember what I told you. Take a deep breath. <laughs> and another. And think about... Uh, about galloping along a sandy beach in the sunshine with the summer wind blowing in your mane. Now, how do you feel? Better. Thank you. Oh, and it goes without saying that as well as going to see an orthodontist, you'll have to cut down on the sugary drinks. Mmm! Lovely. <laughs> Good. She hasn't gone yet. Hello, Haley. We've got a present for you. Well, thank you very much, but she's already got a toothbrush, I say. Getting her to use it, that's the problem. Ah, but this is a special toothbrush.
We thought you might be less likely to forget to brush your teeth if we made it more interesting. That's very good. Yes, it is rather clever. Well, Claire and Arthur did the hard work, but... It's based on our dynamo. Oh, ingenious. Well done, you two. Come along, Hedy. Time to go home. But it was my idea. Oh. oh, sorry, Kitty. Wasn't looking where I was going. Oh, that's not a problem, Doctor. I heard about what you did for Haley. I was very impressed. Just doing my job, Kitty. So, how are you finding the Stethomatic 6000? My... my new stethoscope. You noticed? I notice a lot of things, Dr. Matthews. More than you might think. <laughs> uh, don't look now, Kitty, but I think little Elvis has just been ill down the front of your lovely new apron. Oh, dear. My nice new... Just a minute. My apron. He noticed. Oh, Dr. Matthews. There's nothing wrong with my driving. It's the hippo in the back. It's too blooming heavy. Right, Ted. Get her out. Good job she's on a gurney, Ted. We'd never lift her. Grab it, Ted. God, it's too heavy. Watch out. Who's it? Welcome to Hilltop Hospital, Mrs. Hippopotamus. So, you see, all we have to do with our fabulous new cake-making machine is, one... Put in the ingredients. Two... Pull the handle. And three... Bob your uncle. You can't eat it now. Oh, not fair. You'll just have to wait. That cake's for your birthday. Oh. Oh. My Lucy, you are a big girl. Your mother says you've been feeling tired and out of breath. Do you eat a lot, Lucy? She eats the same as everyone else. And you never eat between meals, do you, Lucy? Mm. No. Well, you're very heavy for your age and height, Lucy. It's not good for your heart. Let's take a blood test. Ooh, what's that pink elephant on the ceiling? Doesn't it? We couldn't find anything unusual. But there must be something wrong. Snap. You looked. I didn't. Let's see the cake. Yum, yum. 
Did you see what I saw, Ted? Three bunnies acting funny. <laughs> Back to bed with you. Go to sleep. He's late. Just been to the little hippo's room. Right, okay. Off to sleep then, everyone. Night. <gasps> the birthday cake's gone. Someone stole it in the night. I hope you aren't accusing me. It wasn't me. And it wasn't me. Dr. Atticus, have you taken a birthday cake from the lab? Uh. Oh, uh, 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 cake? Oh, I'd love some. Oh. Claire and Arthur will just have to make another one. And we'll lock it in the cupboard where it's safe. We'll put the rest of the food for the party in the staff room fridge. Hello, Lucy. How are you? All right. Today we're going to try a new therapy. <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? Not really. Don't be rude, Lucy. We're going to wrap you in bandages, in a lovely mud bar. I hate mud. It stinks. Lucy! <laughs> I won't be able to get to my lettuce, will I? I do sometimes need a snack while I'm working. We'll put your lettuce right here, Dr. Atticus. Right at the front. How's that? Lovely. Lucy! There's no need to be frightened, Lucy. We'll try a different therapy. Snap! You look! Don't start that again. Where are you going? I'm going for a wee. I need a temple too. I'm Boston. Don't belong then. I just fancy a lettuce sandwich. Oh dear. What is it, Dr. Atticus? Someone's stolen all the biscuits and chocolate for the party. That's terrible. What about the birthday party tomorrow? Oh. We'll buy some more crisps and chocolate bars, but not until tomorrow. That'll put a stop to this. Will you take Lucy for a bath, please, Tess? She's been sweating a lot in the night. Can do. It's what we're here for. I'll change the sheets. They may be a bit damp. No! No! You'll feel a lot fresher with clean sheets, Lucy. Oh. Oh, but I was hungry. I, I thought it was all right to take things from the fridge. Well, it wasn't. Besides, you know too much chocolate isn't good for you, don't you, Lucy? Mm. Are you unhappy about something? Is that what's making you want to eat all the time? Nobody wants to play with me. They all ran away when I arrived and called me Jelly Belly. Sorry, we didn't mean it. I'd like to play with you. Me too. I don't believe you. Hands up, everyone that wants to play with Lucy. This vegetable pie is delicious. Yes, we made it especially for Lucy. It's got lots of vitamins, but it's not fattening. Very scientific. 
Perhaps you could give me the recipe. I could make it at home. Ah! Ah! Who'd like some birthday cake? Me, no, me first. What about you, Lucy? Um, uh, um... It's all right, Lucy. You can eat sweet things as long as you don't have too much. Um, well, maybe a small piece. Goodbye, Lucy. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Just keep to the diet and come back and see me in a week. Can you get then? If you don't mind, we'd rather walk home, wouldn't we, Mum? I, uh, no. We don't mind at all. I think you're putting on a bit of weight, Ted's. You should do a bit of exercise. Don't be cheeky. Yes, don't be cheeky. Fancy a game of football. Porridge much safer. You know where you are with a bowl of porridge. <sighs> Don't worry, son. They'll do everything they can to make you better. You need plenty of rest. No more climbing trees for a while. But I love climbing trees. Ted, can you take him to X-ray? Right. right. Hold tight. <laughs> Very good, Charlotte. But you can come down now. You won't be saying that when I've had my tonsils out. Will I ever be able to sing again? Of course. Give it a few days, you'll be back to normal. Hmm, there's a chip in his back. No wonder he finds it hard to move. It will get better, won't it? He should be all right in a month or two. We'll put him in traction. We've got to make sure his bones don't move around. <sighs> oh, I hate needles! There's a pretty slide you're wearing. Yes, I wore it in the school concert. Scabble. You won't be able to do that, not for a while. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll find something else for you to do instead. How would you like it if I read you a story? Once upon a time, there was a monkey who liked to climb trees. <laughs> What 
are you doing? I'm trying to sing. Oh, it's a bit early for that. You only had your tonsils out this morning. But I've got a school musical in two weeks and I'm in the leading role. I have to practice. But how can I with a voice like this? Why don't you get Danny to do some painting? That'll cheer him up. It always works for me. Don't be silly. He can't use his arms or legs. You don't need arms and legs to paint, Kitty. How would you like to do a nice big painting? How am I going to do that? I'll just pop this in your mouth. <coughs> It. Painting is all about expressing your feelings. If you feel angry inside, let it all out through paint. A month. He'll be in traction for a month. Possibly longer. He's so fed up he doesn't want to get better. Can't you do something to cheer him up? We're doing everything we can. <laughs> What's this, Felicity? A new fashion? I think it's very colourful, Felicity. Hm. No, this isn't a new fashion. I've been painting with Danny. But how can he? With his mouth, Dr Matthews. He has a real talent. Well, he certainly knows how to spread the paint around. He shows signs of a true artist, extremely passionate. The only trouble is he doesn't want to paint. Hmm. He's fed up like Charlotte. Maybe we should move them in together. You always know what to do, Dr. Matthews. I admire that in a dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Danny. This is Charlotte. Say hello. Hello. Oh! Not much good at painting, are you? Right, Ted. Oof! Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Give it a bit longer, Dr. Matthews. We should take that paint set away before he does any more damage. No, look. La, la, la. La, 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 la. <laughs> You're not much good at singing. That's because I've had an operation. Can I have a go? I've got to be better at it than you are. What's that? It looks like a monster. It is. It's you. <laughs> Here, give that to me. Looks like a frog. <laughs> it's you. Grrr, grrr. Right, I'll get you for that. I want Danny moved to another hospital. That's not a good idea. Danny shouldn't be moved at the moment. It might damage his back. Well, he doesn't seem to be getting any better here. We're doing our best. What? With all that silly painting? That's not going to make him better. It's you, singing. Or just pretending to. Why don't you really sing? I sound like a frog. Remember? I'm sorry I said that. I was only joking. No, you were right. I do croak. Not as much as me. Croak. It's coming back! <laughs> Someone sounds like they're having fun. Gosh! I knew it. This shows real talent. I can see a poor soul struggling all alone in the universe. Actually, it's a frog. Of course it's a frog. But the frog is just a symbol. It's good that you're feeling better. Yes, Charlotte's singing has really cheered me up. Singing? singing. La, 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 la. What a lovely voice. Yes, it's lovely. Perhaps you'd like to sing for one of my relaxation tapes. And maybe we could put one of Danny's paintings on the cover.
Here's someone from the Hilltop Herald to take your photo. Gosh, are we going to be in the newspaper? One, two, three, smile. Dr. Matthews, Dr. Matthews, look. New talent discovered at Hilltop. Oh, Dr. Matthews, don't we look good together? I think they mean Danny and Charlotte. <gasps> We're famous! And you both deserve it. Yeah, and we couldn't have done it without each other. I can't believe it. I find something else I'm good at, even when I'm like this. And I'll be able to sing in the musical now. Yeah, you'll be the star of the show. your finger, I would. Quite right, Ted. I'd recognise one anywhere. <laughs> it's dirt. That's what it is. I want that ambulance washed and polished and quick about it. Dr Bickerbeak will be here any minute. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> what? Oh, no. What's that on your tie? Huh? Um, mm, tastes like cauliflower. Well, clean it off. I want you looking your best for the inspection. Uh, yes, Sally. And clean up this wall. Dr. Pickerbeak will be here any minute. He's never had chest pains before, Dr. Matthews. He's always been a healthy little mole. A lot of young animals get chest pains. It's not always serious. Have you eaten anything that might give you a tummy upset? Breathe in. Have you been doing push-ups? Are you worried about something? It's his first day at school tomorrow. He's very worried about it. Oh, uh, it's all right. You can breathe out. <sighs> Make this bed at once. Yeah, the floor's wet. Oh, the pipe's leaking. Better call the Ted's kitty. We need to get that fixed before Dr. Bickerbeak arrives. I don't think there's anything to worry about. I can't find anything wrong with you, Morris. Thank you, Doctor. It's a great relief. I can take him home then. Yes. I bet you're glad to be going home, Morris. No, no. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> we thought this would be useful for the hospital school. You can teach people about shapes. And about gravity, how things fall downwards. Or you can just make things with it. What is it? 
It's a design for a high-rise rabbit warren. This won't hurt, Morris. Just lie still. It won't take a minute. See? It's measuring your heartbeat. What's that on the ceiling? What? I can't see anything. Oh, dear. What is it? i better tell Dr Matthews about this one at once. Uh -oh. uh. Don't you realise that there's a hospital inspection today? You've simply got to fix it. Uh, um. Not now, Dr Matthews. Can't you see there's a crisis on? But, Sally, look. <gasps> Good. Get that mole into a bed at once. I've never seen anything like it. Is there anything you can do? He'll have to have a scan. We may have to operate. It might respond to laser surgery. Mm. Poor Morris. Hello, everyone. Time for school. School? We don't have school in hospital. Of course you do. Yes, we make sure you don't miss anything when you're in hospital. I feel much better now. I want to go home. Come on, Morris. You've got an operation tomorrow. Today, we're going to learn about shapes and about gravity. And we're going to make things. You will enjoy it, Morris. Hurry up, Ted's. Dr Bickerbeak is here. <laughs> This is our staff, Dr. Bickerbeak. I'm sure you remember most of them. Of course. Shall I lead the way? Where's Dr. Atticus? Well, Ted, can we fix it? No, we can't. Here's the electrocardiogram. Yes, very good, but you should move the machine further away from the couch. The patient could nudge it. Where's Dr. Atticus? I haven't seen him. That's amazing! It's wonderful, Morris. But, uh, what is it? It's a design for a high-rise badger set. This way, Dr. Bickerbeak. Let me show you the wall. Hurry up, Ted's. Hey, young mole. Will you give us a hand? I'm sure you'll be delighted with the way we look after our patients. And this is our broom cupboard. Look, we've got the most up-to-date vacuum cleaner. Uh, yes. Very good. Kitty! Yes, try that bit. That looks good. Hurry, they're coming! Quick, let's pop up. Let's pop up. Look! What is it, Kitty? Uh, the light fitting. Can you see, Dr. Bickerbeak? We only use the finest light bulbs. Uh, yes. Well done. This way, Dr. Bickerbeak. My, my. Yes, well, I, I can explain everything. What a splendid idea. Yes, I'm glad to see that you have a proper school in the hospital. Well done. What imagination. Uh, yes. Well, I do my best. What a splendid construction, and so practical. Such a good idea to involve the patients in the practical workings of the hospital. Well done, young mole. Right, where next? Lead on, Surgeon Sally. Perhaps you'd like to see our lab. Well done, Morris. A gift. That's what you've got. A real talent. But that's enough excitement for one day. You've got a big operation tomorrow. I don't want an operation. If you don't have an operation, you won't get better. But I'm not ill. I was just pretending. Now, Morris, we all saw the results from the electrocardiogram. 
But Nurse Kitty, I hit the machine with my elbow. I did it on purpose. I, I didn't want to go to school. An excellent lab. This is a very good hospital. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Dr. Dr. Becker Beak. I think that's just about everything. Yes, everything. <laughs> There's really nothing to worry about. I'm sure you'll like school. I feel much better now. I want to go home. It's just a shame that Dr. Atticus isn't here. On holiday, you'll say. Yes, he's been working very hard. Needed some time off. What's in there? Oh, that's just the linen cupboard. Our linen cupboard is always clean and tidy. Look! <laughs> Dr. Atticus! Oh, 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 yes. Hello, Dr. Pickaby. Is it time for the inspection? <laughs> <laughs> oh.